love two things, yoga and science. I love blending the two in my practice. My personal training knowledge has been a really, really nice accompaniment to my yoga practice. Not only in building my sequences, but in really having solid, valid proof that yoga is amazing at so many things. And not just the movement practice, also the breathing practices as well, the mindfulness practices, the science is all there and I love it and I find it super fascinating. So for this course, we're going to basically look at the yoga and just rub science all over it. We'll look at it through that scientific lens and get just get super excited about the yoga and what it's doing in our bodies for us while we're doing it. The first thing we're going to talk about is the basic sequencing of, of class, of a yoga session. This basic arc structure is the initiation, the warming, the pathway to peak, the exploring peak, and the integration and cool down. And we'll start simply with that initi initiation, setting the attention, arriving at the space. This is that, that mind over matter moment, whether it's you're revving up for a full energetic class, or whether you're just trying to arrive at that space, it's really important to simply be here in this moment to eliminate perceived distractions and to really just incorporate that into your practice. Um, again, coming at it kind of from a science point, right, this will help reduce injury when you're on your mat. This will help, you're literally rewiring your brain every time you come to this present moment. We'll start first with low cobra. Right, we're on our, we're on our bellies. We're engaging our backs to peel our chest off the mat engaging our back muscles. So we've got a lot going on here. The cervical and thoracic mid-back muscles are all flexing. Um, the muscles in the shoulders, uh, the acronym is SITS. Let's see, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, subscapularis. Boom! Um, all of those are helping to pull your shoulders back. Um, erector spinae, that's the muscle that follows along your spine, spinae. Um, lower trapezius, so the trapezius muscles are these ones that kind of come up through here. So the lower trapezius especially is not only wrapping your shoulder blades around your back, but also allowing for your shoulders to come away from your ears. Kind of like allowing the scapula to go from up here and then kind of wrap around, almost hugging our torso. Um, that keeps the shoulders away from the ears, but also allows the most room in the shoulder joint for all of those little sits muscles to not get pinched by the shoulder joint. Another thing to consider is the latissimus dorsi. So those are our muscles that are on our back lower than our scapula. Those muscles are our strongest extender. So here's our arm from our anat anatomical correct position. Our extension, our arm extension, is our arm moving back this way. So if our arm starts here and our arm is moving this way, we're extending it. So with our arms up here, with our lats being our strongest extender, that means they're also the strongest 
resistor of flexion. So with our hands up here and our down dog position, we're pressing into our hands and what is allowing the, our hands essentially to not over flex, right, to fly away back here is our lat muscles. Yoga, the movement practice that is associated with yoga has been around a lot longer than the concept of PNF stretching. Understanding that lengthening muscles is more than simply leveraged static stretching and that the most beneficial way to find length in the muscles is to find balance in the muscles, to continuously lengthen, shorten your target muscle and your opposing muscle. It can just be really valuable for your practice and for your students.